Hey everybody, welcome back to Race of History. So, going through some of these videos that are within the vein of World War II, one of the things that I had noticed or picked up on was that the different historians' arguments for each side of a lot of these things are not really addressed. And specifically, the idea or the, the arguments from the historians that believe Germany could have won World War II, especially tactically, right? Um, I personally am kind of on the fence about this. Tactically, I believe it could have been won. Once you mix in the ideology and, and the pervasiveness of the ideology, I'm on the fence about it, about whether Germany could have actually won the war or not long term. However, there are a lot of arguments back and forth on this from historians. And while I see a lot of those arguments in videos on here for World War I, I don't see very many for World War II. The overarching public sentiment seems to be that Germany could not win World War II tactically or, uh, you know, regardless of the ideology or anything like that. There was just no way they could have won World War II with the strategic situation the way that it was. I, therefore, am going to do a video. I'm going to put together an original video of the historian's arguments of why Germany could have won World War II. Tactically, most of them don't go into ideology hardly at all. They are very much like boots on the ground, what could have been done here and there. But I'm going to do that video and explain the other side of the argument for this. But while I'm putting the video together, I thought what I would do is go through a lot of the other videos online that are of the opposite opinion and essentially give the historians arguments for why Germany could not win World War II. So today that's what we're going to look at. Germany could not win World War II. Let's get into it. I've finished fine-tuning my what-if machine. It can answer any what-if question accurate to within one-tenth of a plausibility unit. Who wants the machine to show them an alternate reality? Oh, oh, I want to know if Germany wins if Hitler stops making decisions. <laughs> Who else has a question for the what-if machine? I, I have one. Do they win if they Mars produce the mouse tank? Show me what would happen if they took Moscow. <laughs> That's so plausible, I can't believe it. People love rooting for the underdog. These stories strike a chord with us at a very basic level, and you can tell this by how popular these stories are in media. This also translates... People do not like rooting for Germany in World War II. That is not the way that that works. They are not seen as the underdog. They are not liked. If anything, the perception goes the other direction, where because of the ideology, they are outright despised. It's to real world stories, although real life does not have a plot that always turns in the underdog's favor. So there's this kind of romanticism connected to fighting for a lost cause that a lot of people assign to a lot of real world groups. One of these you see talked about a lot is the German army of World War II. That if only dumb Hitler hadn't been in charge, or if different choices were made, that the war would have turned out different. And a lot of these arguments seem to hold water on the surface, but upon reflection, mostly miss the point or do not make a significant enough change to sway anything. These are my favorite how Germany could have won scenarios and how they're wrong. I hear this. I've already gone through this. On the the tick video, I believe, I don't think taking Moscow makes any difference at all. In fact, I think it is taking resources from what really the Germans need to be focused on. This one all the time, that if the Germans had just driven onto Moscow and taken it, the Russians would have capitulated. But it is rarely backed up with evidence as to why. Even in the memoirs of German generals after the war, they constantly mentioned that the drive to Moscow would have meant victory in the east. 
And I think the reason for this is that they model the Russian campaign after the French campaign. In the French campaign in 1940, the French surrender once Paris is cut off from its forces and looks like it's about to fall. Using this model, a lot of people think that the exact same would apply to Russia. The only problem with this is Russia is a whole different animal, both politically and geographically. Stalin was going to put every man, woman, and child in the Soviet Union between him and the advancing Germans. And this is exemplified by the way the Red Army fought the war, often trading casualties for time. So if Moscow was taken, sure, it's a political and also logistical defeat, given that the rail network was centered around it. But no way do I think Stalin is just going to shrug and say, well, we tried, after Moscow was taken. And with that, we would probably see the Soviet Union fighting to the bitter end, just like the Germans did in reality. This is also backed up by real-world history from Napoleon's Russia campaign in 1812, where he went on... This is exactly, exactly the same comparison I made to light in the comments prior to this video, that the Germans would have been in the same position that Napoleon was in. They would have been sitting in Moscow, waiting around, kicking rocks, wondering when they were going to get their letter from Stalin that said that, you know, the Russians or the Soviets were going to sue for peace. And that letter just was not going to come. On to take Moscow, but still lost the war. Russia is such a large and vast country that they have the ability to trade casualties and land at a higher rate than any other country can. And therefore, the normal rules of war, such as taking the capital and ensuring victory, do not apply. Are they not seeing this? Specifically in the Soviet Union, I completely disagree with this viewpoint that Hitler should have listened to his generals. Again, it's it's kind of the same thing as the drive on Moscow. Like the generals didn't see the grand picture for the most part. And it just was not uh strategically or tactically advantageous for Hitler to do what his generals were pushing him to do. Another commonly heard point is that Hitler made terrible decisions and he should have just listened to his generals. Now I'm not here to defend Adolf Hitler, he's a crazy genocidal maniac, let's not make two ways about it. But this isn't always the case. For example, Hitler and the high command were all in agreement on invading Russia. They all very much wanted to, in their eyes, destroy communism and save Germany as Hitler laid out in his book. But once this effort was undertaken, Hitler and his generals began to disagree at times on what moves needed to be made. And once the war is over, many generals in their memoirs begin to claim that Hitler made all the bad decisions, and that if he had just listened to them, the war would have been won. And one example of this I already hinted at in the former point. Hitler's generals were convinced that taking Moscow would end the war for many erroneous reasons I listed previously. For Hitler, Moscow was a general direction in which to head, but was not the final objective. For him, the resources in the Ukraine and the oil fields beyond were a much more important target. And given Germany's oil shortages, this is a good example of where Hitler was right and his generals were wrong. And actually, a lot of Hitler's so-called mistakes start to make a whole lot more sense once you put it into the context of Germany's fuel shortages. And if you want more information on this, Tick did an excellent video on Germany's oil problem that you should really check out. Another example of this sentiment being wrong is Operation Citadel in 1943. Hitler's generals convinced him that an attack on the Kursk bulge would cripple the Red Army and renew Germany's initiative in the war. Hitler saw... Again, I talked about this in the other video, but strategically, the, the German generals were just so, so, so far out in left field on as far as what would have produced overall victory and what would not have, that it's hard for me to give any credence to the argument that he should have listened to his generals in the Soviet Union, that I just... Yeah, if anything, he should have completely ignored them, relieved them, you know, wh whatever, whatever. But he definitely should not have listened to them. Oh, this plan is very flawed, though. Famously saying, every time I think about Operation Citadel, my stomach turns over. And seeing how poorly this turned out for the Germans, his premonition was eerily correct. Now, if this was the caricature of Hitler always overriding his generals that is commonly seen... Citadel would have been called off before it was launched. Now these are just two quick examples, and yes, there are times, especially later in the war, where Hitler overrules his generals with poor decisions. The Battle of the Bulge comes to mind. But early in the war, when these decisions really count, Hitler is many times making the right decisions when overruling his generals, or going along with them in agreement of a common goal. 
so Hitler should have just listened to his generals and he would have won the war, is a moot point. Because many times he did, and his generals were wrong, and many times he didn't, and he turned out to be right. It's all Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. This is actually... We, you Tick went over this in his video also, but the, the issue is not more stuff. It's oil shortage, right? Like, that's the main issue here. That's one of the main things that I'm going to address on the video that I'm making is specifically about oil. Um, but yeah, that's the building, the actual building of more stuff is not, not really the issue. Actually, a point I used to subscribe to. A very honest critique of the German war economy is that it was not on the right footing. And people make this argument usually saying things like, Germany should have just made more Panzer IVs instead of pouring resources into the Tiger. Or, Germany should have built the Luftwaffe back up so they could regain air superiority. And I will give you that the German war economy in many places was an absolute nightmare. John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and really highlights how backwards the German production process was for armored vehicle manufacturing and mentions how that knowledge can be applied to other types of war manufacturing. And although once Spear takes over, production is streamlined to a degree, and munitions and weapons production goes up year by year, it's not near where it needs to be to fight this attritional war. Which is absolutely insane. Think about what he's saying. Think about what he's saying. That the German uh, productive economy is on the wrong foot, and once Hitler's architect, takes control, it gets better. Like, what? So obviously the solution is to just streamline production, sort of how you see in the American... That tells you how bad it was starting off, is my point. ...model, and this would have given Germany a better chance in the war. Although this is a good criticism, it misses the core issue. The biggest thing Germany was running low on from 1942 onward is, as I mentioned before, oil and larger numbers of tanks and planes wouldn't be any good if there was no fuel to run them. Also, Germany was having manpower shortages as early as 1942 or 43, and along with fuel to run these machines, you need people to crew them. These are just two issues that cannot be remedied by streamlining production. At a certain point, Germany is just going to be out of oil and out of men, and no amount of additional tanks or planes would operationally be possible. What's the matter, run out of gas? Kinda embarrassing. This is another point that deceptively seems to make a lot of sense, as Germany was crushed by a two-front war. It stands to reason that if Japan and Germany through their alliance had coordinated an attack on Russia, they would have won. And that may honestly be true. A big boost to the defense of Moscow came after Russian troops from Siberia were sent west after the Russo-Japanese non-aggression pact. The only problem with this is that coordination did not and was never going to happen. Yeah. Germany and Japan were allies by circumstance and shared no real common goals with each other. Yep. And in fact, they're operating in opposition to each other at times. And Japan does not want to get involved in that war. That is not... Japan does not want to get involved in that war. German training of Chinese troops in the 30s as they were fighting the Japanese is a direct example of this. In short, neither side was going to stick out its neck for the other. In no. fact, Russia as a common enemy was probably the only instance in which they would have, and even then they did not. The reason for Japan not wanting to do this is mostly colored by the Japanese experience against the Soviets at the Battle of Konkan Gol, please forgive my pronunciation, where the Red Army gave the Imperial Army a very bloody nose in an undeclared border conflict. This incident convinced the Japanese to not go through with any action that would provoke the Soviet Union as they did not want war with them since they were already fighting China and would soon be fighting the United States. This avoidance of provoking the Soviet Union went far enough that during the war in the Pacific between Japan and the United States, the Japanese refused to sink any U.S. merchant ships headed to the Soviet Union. So, the Japanese attacking the Soviet Union directly flies in the face of the intentions, Inc. And that makes sense, right? Like, what does Japan have to gain out of attacking the Soviet Union unless there is, like, a 1,000% chance of victory? And, like, a quick victory. Because if that's not the case... Everything about it is bad for Japan, even if they end up winning in the super long term. So, yeah, Japan just, Japan wants nothing to do with that. Characteristics of the Japanese high command, to the point where it strays out of potential history, kill yourself, into the realm of fantasy. <laughs> you have screwed me again, Japan. 
This is my favorite one. If they had just made insert ridiculous design here, the war may have gone differently. And it's the idea that this thing, or this thing, or this thing, would somehow have single-handedly lengthened the war. There are a few fan favorites for pics of these. No, they did Here's the thing. Here, my total viewpoint on this is lengthening the war is the worst outcome for Germany. Like, sure, they aren't, like, they haven't lost, but the longer the war goes, the worse off they are with the, the situation the way that it was. And so they needed to do everything they could early on, which is what I'll get into in my video. The one I see most often being the mouse, the ridiculous 200-ton behemoth that in reality would have been awesome target practice for Allied fighter bombers and something for Allied soldiers to gawk at once it had run out of fuel and had to be abandoned. Or German jet aircraft that, although cutting edge and superior to what the Allies had, still couldn't have been applied in a large scale due to the aforementioned fuel and personnel problems. And the list for these things goes on and on. A personal pet peeve of mine in this category is the what-if question about the German atomic program and the claim that if they had applied themselves, the Germans could have come up with an atomic weapon first. This notion, though, just like that of Japan invading Russia, very quickly falls into the category of fantasy, once looked at for three main reasons. One, many of Germany's top scientists were expelled in the 30s for being Jewish, automatically limiting German atomic capability. Yeah, so Germany did to its science sector what Stalin did, essentially, to the Red Army, right? It's, it's the same thing. They both just totally cut out the legs from under those groups, and it took time to get anything back up to close to normal. And so, again, things that were specific to the leaders of the countries in Stalin and Hitler and their weird personalities, uh, but both came back to bite them in a... In a Big way. Please. And actually, many of these scientists went on to work in the American nuclear program. So to make this win scenario work, you automatically have to make the Nazis tolerant of Jews, which is not going to happen. Two, the German atomic program is all but canceled by 1942. As Speer put it, we got the view that the development was very much at the beginning. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it. Which works into my third point, that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish science and pointed the focus of German development towards conventional weapons. So we're not even talking about an atomic race between the US and Germany, as it was barely being pursued by the Germans. And to give a what-if scenario about it would fly directly in the face of what Hitler stood for. And this gets into the bigger problem with this question, that even if Germany does produce these wonder weapons and extends the war, it's only going to extend it long enough to be the first country to get nuked, due to the Germany first policy of the Allies. Are you making a jet plane? Mm -hmm. Or a remote control that can turn you into super soldier? Mm -hmm. Or is it just another dumb tank? Okay, so nothing in that addressed any of the arguments that I'm going to give on my video, which I'm kind of glad about. I don't want to have to give anything away before I put it out. But that was really good. I agree with it. And especially with the, the nuclear program one, at that point, you're stretching the what if so far that like almost anything could happen. I mean, if the Germans get nuclear weapons, you basically, everything about everything is different. You know, you could have, have mermaids swimming in the Atlantic Ocean right now. Like, I mean, seriously, you are, you are so stretching the fabric of the what if that it makes almost anything possible. So anyway, that was a good video. I'll get to the next part later today or tomorrow. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Help me keep building the channel over here. I like this conversation. So um, those of you who think they could, that Germany could win or couldn't win, whether it was tactically or whatever, um, put in the comments. I like reading them and I like talking about them. Um, I'll see you guys next time.